Hello, this is Scott and you're watching Hexus TV and I'm talking to Leslie, our director of AMD, and we're talking about the brand new Shanghai server processor launch. Hello, Hexus. Hello, Leslie. Um, you said uh, in your presentation this morning that this was two and a half years in the making. Yes. Can you just uh, elaborate a little bit on that time scale? That is really d from design conception through to product. So, I mean, that in of course includes Barcelona product Yeah, well, that's well. what I was wondering about. Yeah, yeah. So this is really from the first design, you know, inception being done to actually having product here. And so even though this is... Um, and at its simplest form, a shrink of the 65 nanometer product, there's a lot of enhancements that went along with it and a lot of stuff that had been built even into the architecture prior to Barcelona. Okay. So that's really where the two and a half years comes from. And can you tell me just briefly a little bit more about some of these enhancements? Sure. Um, at a really simple level, it hits one on virtualization, which we think is a very key driver this year and into probably 2012. It's okay. a key trend. It's going to be probably the growth area for servers. And no pun intended, but virtually every customer is asking us about yep. it. Probably HPC might be the only part of the market that really isn't interested in virtualization. So when those enhancements are really around memory, um, what we call uh, switching you know, between virtual environments, that's okay. about 25% faster in Shanghai over Barcelona, okay. as well as doing live migrations in a heterogeneous environment. So no matter what your OS, no matter what your environment, being able to do a virtualized world is a very key piece. But let's not lose power either, because that yep. continues to be another driving force. Uh, and we've, with the die shrink, we have the opportunity not only to gain performance, but also to gain performance in a better power envelope, yep. or better performance in the same power envelope, depending on what you want to um, what you want to accomplish. Yep. So if you look at Barcelona to Shanghai, same frequency, uh, frequency to frequency, Shanghai at full load has t 10 to 20 percent less power. Okay. At idle, 35% less power draw. And from a performance standpoint, if you look at it through that lens, Shanghai has 35% more performance over Barcelona in the same power envelope and, oh, by the way, the same price. So right. those are really the high-level key pieces. So 35% is a sort of key yeah, stat. Yeah, if you're going to remember that anything, remember that, both in performance as well as in power. Okay. And... Um uh, you know, as much as you're, you're, you care to be specific, sure. how does this compare to what your competitors offering in that area? Well, let me give you a, a, a couple of, I think, real-world examples. Let's take virtualization, for instance. We've launched six SKUs, uh, four with it Dell and four with HP, two socket and four socket, all virtualization servers. Okay. Only two of them have an Intel equivalent, so four have no Intel equivalent. So the two leaders in the server market in HP and Dell clearly see AMD as a leader in the virtualization market. And I think it's very fair to say um, that we will continue to lead in price performance in Shanghai over the competition. Okay. For, is there any sort of time period over which you expect that leadership to continue? I would say for the foreseeable future. Okay. We certainly don't see any um, product coming down from next year from them in a two-socket world, four-socket world that's going to change that. Okay, and, and how, uh, how is Shanghai sort of being received, let's say, compared to Barcelona um, by, the, by the market? Yeah, I think there's a couple things. First of all, we've been shipping for weeks, and yep. it's wonderful when you um, contrast that to Barcelona to stand mm. up and say, we are shipping product and And you're actually ahead of weeks. schedule, is that right? We're ahead of schedule. We've been shipping product. Everything is great. That's a, dis uh, you know, a, a complete... Must be a nice feeling. Yes, it does. It feels wonderful to have, uh, to have product and have, it, and have it be shipping. Okay, and, and well received. Presumably. And well received. So we've got 25 SKUs so far. We should have about 32 by the end of Q4 uh, in terms of availability. Uh, the channel will start shipping as well for system builders uh, as of tomorrow. Everybody's ready for that as well. So good readiness, good SKU availability, and product is shipping. It's the best kind of launch you can have if you launch a product and, frankly, you've already started shipping. Right. So you obviously view... It, by, by the measures you've just described, you view the launch as a success. Yes. How, how will you know that um, it's been a commercial success? By, how will you measure that? I think we'll look at that in Q1. Certainly, SKU availability is your first milestone when you're launching, right? Readiness, SKU availability, product shipping. And then as we look towards deployment, which will happen throughout Q1, and that'll be another test of success is how many end users are taking the product right. and what are they doing with them. So you're going to see more from us in terms of the stories and customer success stories with Shanghai and Q1. But that'll be another barometer. Okay. Um, and one thing I'm curious about, obviously, a lot of the time when we write about AMD, we're writing about sort of consumer um, yes. products. 
In desktop, usually. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you know, and, and obviously, um, Intel's got a lot of uh, a lot of positive press over over its um, desktop CPUs and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yep. I'm curious to know how important server CPUs are to AMD's business on the whole. Very key, um, because of margin. You don't have to know much about AMD to know that we need to start making a profit. Indeed. Um, we've been we've committed to break even um, for quarters, and but the goal is absolutely profitability and having healthy server product and having healthy server sales is the number one right. uh, uh, path, if you will, to profitability. So you seem to be AMD. saying that's even more important than the, the consumer side. Oh, absolutely. I would say commercial server is our number one priority. Right, okay. Yeah. So this, this launch itself is, is a, a particularly key one. Right. I mean, we have to do everything well. Yeah. You know, we, in the situation that we stuff. sit in, you know, being the underdog, we can't afford um, to make mistakes mm -hmm. or to mess up. So we need to be flawless in our execution across all product lines. But um, certainly server stands above that in terms of profitability okay. for us. So talking about flawless execution or, yeah. or sometimes not, yes. um, comparing this launch to, to Barcelona, yeah. if, if this is the product that you'd launched at Barcelona time, um, how profound an effect on, on AMD's finances and AMD's overall sort of corporate performance do you think that would have had? You know, it's interesting. I think it's always fun to say, boy, I wish this was the product I had last year. And, you know, next year what we launch will be, boy, I wish this was the product I had last year. You're, you're always wishing for the next product to have the, the year that you just don't have it. Mm -hmm. I think more than just the product. I think the, pro the Barcelona product for sure is, is a good product. Uh, we've had a, a, a good SKU lineup. It's gotten a lot of um, good customer uptake on it. But it was a bad perception, in all honesty, yeah. in terms of launch. And it was much more about launch perception than it was the product. And I think the, the idea that we didn't have SKUs ready, that mm -hmm. the product wasn't ready, impacted, if you will, the image of that product that okay. it probably didn't deserve. Okay. Um, it's a much better product than, um, than the launch indicated. And it was up to us to probably launch that product in the right way than it was to, to wish for a different product or this product. Indeed. Indeed. And, and, and it looks like you're on a pretty sort of tight schedule as far as new products. I was talking to Giuseppe yeah. earlier. And he referred oh, to. Oh, what did he tell you? Oh, he referred to. Oh, what did he, he tell me? Did, lots he, did of he reveal things. it all? Did he show you the entire roadmap? Yeah, yeah. In fact, this this, this interview is <laughs> completely redundant. We covered everything. No, only joking. Good. So then I can go. <laughs> <laughs> no, one more thing. <laughs> okay. He referred to um, Istanbul, which looks like it's that's not too far away. Yep. So you've got a you've got a really sort of tight cycle of, of sort of refreshes. Right. A good cadence and also a cadence. What, what's wonderful about Istanbul is it'll be again additional features coming, um, additional core counts and P states but it'll also be within the same infrastructure. One of the key points yeah. about this is that it's fast and easy migration. You're in a Socket F platform. If you bought Barcelona, you can plug in Shanghai. If you bought Shanghai or Barcelona, you can plug in Istanbul. So again, when we talk about this economy now, moving really from a growth economy to a savings economy, the ability of not having a lot of disruption or risk for our customers is a key care about. Yeah. and. Um and so the, the, the two, as far as I, I gather, the sort of key metrics in terms of cost is the initial investment cost and mm -hmm. then the cost of running it. Yes. Do you think, is it possible to sort of subdivide those into which is more important, sort of percentages or anything like that, or is, does it depend on the case? Um, I would say that if you, if you don't do the implementation up front, well, it, it impacts everything in the back end of it. So it's hard to say which is more important, but you've got to get it in the right order, if that makes sense, because mm -hmm. you've screwed up everything if you don't implement yeah. the right way. And so right now we've got a got a sort of global recession or something close yes. to it. Uh, we've also got a lot of people caring about green issues, even if they're not particularly worried about ecology. They're co they worried mm -hmm. about the sort of cost of things. Yes. And it, am I right in understanding that those are probably the two key um, messages you're coming out with Shanghai is, is the is the cost saving and the yeah, and the energy yeah. saving. Absolutely, and you know uh, better performance in the same power envelope, same price. So it's we think it's the right product at the right time. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. I've been talking to Leslie from AMD. This is Scott, and you've been watching Hexus TV.